For these men, we created secret courts in which the predominance of the evidence was heard in closed session. They didn't know why they were arrested. They didn't know the evidence against them. A breach of Article 6, the right to a fair and public trial in which you know you're told the accusation, you know the evidence. It breached Article 6. <clears throat> Another inalienable human right. But we violated that too. And in these secret courts, in fact, it achieved in one fell swoop the abolition of a jury trial. The accusation was a criminal accusation. These were people involved in some way, linked in some way with international terrorism. They knew someone or were associated with someone or associated with a group which was in turn associated with Al-Qaeda. And the most ludicrous assertions made out of the woodwork came bogus experts, just the same as they had in relation to all of the wrongful convictions of Irish men and women. Always bogus experts. In those days, forensic scientists or police extracting confessions, but with some similarity, the experts on Al-Qaeda, knowing no better, created them into the form of a graph, a graphic depiction, just like a military hierarchy, a British military hierarchy. It had been laden at the top and a military council and a structure as if it were taken from a Western military textbook, not dissimilar to the way in which the Birmingham police gained a confession from a dairy man, John Walker, in 1974, which he confessed to being an IRA brigadier, not noticing that that actually was a British army appointment. That's what he confessed to. Article 3. I'll come back to this. Torture. Absolute prohibition in international law. <clears throat> there is no defense to torture. If you torture there is no defense that you were obeying orders. It's not permitted. Any country that harbors anyone who has committed torture has an obligation either to prosecute or to extradite. There is intended to be no hiding place. But we, for the past 10 years and still continuing, are complicit, our government, our intelligence agents are complicit in torture all around the world. Mozambique, who you've met, was in Pakistan with his wife and his children and he received a telephone call from a friend. This is in January 2002. Received a telephone call from a friend in England to say, someone's been round from MI5 and says, could he have your phone number? In Pakistan, Moism said yes. Two days later, he was bundled into the boot of a car, hooded shackled. When the hood was taken off, he was in a room with Pakistanis, with Americans, 
and the next day, the MI5 officer who had telephoned his friend in England. And for the next many years, he was held in torture chambers in Bagram Air Base, where two people were killed in front of him. He was subjected to isolation in Guantanamo Bay. And who visited our MI5 agents? We were complicit all the way. And two men, two businessmen from England in November 2002 went to the Gambia to set up an enterprise. They were snatched by Americans, taken to the dark prison in Afghanistan, which was an experience so terrible that if you were ever with men who've come back from Guantanamo, you hear them talking to each other sometimes. Whatever happened, whatever the cruelty, whatever the pain of the various types of torture that were inflicted on them, you occasionally hear them say, the dark prison was the worst of all. Now, in trying to get those two businessmen who went to the Gambia back to England, they were both English residents, long time English residents. A, a civil action was started in the courts in England to say that we had a duty to bring them back and that we were complicit in their rendition from the Gambia. And the defendants in the case were the Foreign Secretary, the Home Secretary, and the Intelligence Services. And because we asserted that they had caused the arrest and detention of those two men, the Foreign Secretary and the Home Secretary put in letters to the court to say we didn't. But the intelligence services said nothing. So the judge hearing the case said, well, that will do you. That tells you all you want to know. They haven't said anything. And thanks to the stupidity of the intelligence service, we have now the proof positive of complicity in rendition. They produced their telegrams, which indeed didn't say to the Americans, please arrest these people. It didn't say that. And they thought it helped. But the telegrams were sent before the men traveled sent to the CIA saying they're traveling to Gambia. They're friends of a particular cleric, Abu Qatada. They're deeply involved in international terrorism. They are carrying an improvised explosive device. They are financiers for Al-Qaeda. This is the plane they're traveling on. This is when it will arrive. And by the way, we will not offer them any consular assistance. All of that untrue. Every single word of fabrication save for the time of the flight and the fact there will be no consular assistance. Proof positive of state complicity in rendition and thereafter torture. 